Okay, <clears throat> what we want to do is uh, explore basically this formula that we derived for a kinetic dispersion relation for electron plasma oscillations. So let's call, let's just remind ourselves what that, uh, I'm going to be a little bit too here, um, kinetic dispersion relation. We were kind of in the throes of calculating it. Um, and it's for electron plasma oscillations. Uh, in an unmagnetized plasma. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to make it. So in an unmagnetized plasma, meaning B is equal to zero. And the electron plasma oscillations are, of course, electrostatic, so we don't have any even electromagnetic waves or parts here. What we had basically derived was that we had this function epsilon hat of k and omega, our dielectric response to a wave with e to the i k dot x minus i omega t over epsilon naught was equal to 1 minus um, omega p e squared over k squared. This also is not a very good pen. So I'll try this one. <laughs> uh, omega p e squared over k squared, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, uh, du, df du, divided by u minus omega over k. And what we had done is we had defined this integral by virtue of having done this as an initial value problem with Laplace transforms. And what we found is that it had to be valid for imaginary omega greater than zero. Or I'm it was defined only for that, and it became equal to, with imaginary omega approximately equal to zero, that is to say for nearly real frequencies, omega p e squared over k squared, and then times the principal value, which was this integral that defined going up to the singularity and then past it, minus infinity to infinity du um, df du um, divided by u minus omega over k and then plus pi i df du uh, evaluated at u is equal to omega over k where this last part came about uh, because of the fact that we um, go around the pole in a proper direction. Now, what we next want to do is basically just take some, some limits of this or, and, and work it out. When we say electron plasma oscillations, so what we mean by electron plasma oscillations is we are dealing with usually a cold plasma where we neglect thermal effects. So it would be have cold plasma. And what we would mean is then that omega over k is much greater than V thermal electrons here. So we would have phase velocities large compared to the thermal speed. That being the case, we should sort of think of this omega over k as being large compared to the typical U. So what we will do is we'll expand for small omega over, I'm sorry, large omega over k, small u, and then we'll just perform the integral. And frankly, we won't worry about the exact position of the singularity because that'll occur way out on the tail of the distribution function, and there won't be very many particles that would do that. So with this assumption, then this becomes 1 minus, now we have then omega p e squared over k squared, now, I'll then not worry about the principal value. As you'll see, I won't really need it. Anyway, I'll have minus infinity to infinity df du. And then I want to expand that denominator. So what I'll do is write the denominator as minus omega over k times 1 minus uh, u divided by omega over k. 
So then I have then just 1 minus omega over k. And then I make an expansion of u small velocities compared to the phase velocity. And thinking that that's high out on the tail of the distribution function, this then becomes, this is 1 over that. So I just get 1 over u over omega over k plus u squared over omega over k squared and ad infinitum, of course. Um, now then, I, in addition, have this residue term from having gone around the pole in the proper direction, which is then pi i uh, times df by du evaluated at the velocity equal to the phase velocity of the waves. Now, uh, what I then need to do is to calculate this, this integral of the distribution function. And how do I um, go about doing that? Well, basically, it's a matter of just integrating by parts. So let's fiddle that a bit. First is, let's take the look at the first integral would be minus infinity to infinity du, just df du. But that's just a total integral, df, from, I should be careful here, u equals minus infinity to u equals plus infinity, df of u. And that would just be f of u evaluated from minus infinity to infinity. But that's, you know, out at the end of a Maxwellian where it's exponentially small. So that actually goes to zero. What about the next term? Minus infinity and infinity df du. Well, that one's a u over omega over k. So I won't worry about the omega over k for a moment. I'll just say u. Uh, well, I'm better if I keep the omega over k. Then this becomes 1 over omega over k. Now, so this is u du df du. How do I go about calculating that? Well, again, we can just make this, you know, uh, a total derivative and then integrate by parts. And so we'll just get u f of u from u equals minus infinity to infinity. That's the total integral. That gives us 0. And then we'll have the integral from zero, sorry, minus infinity to infinity of du. Uh, well, it'd be du and then f of u. And what will that be? Well, we hopefully had a properly normalized distribution function, so this was just equal to 1. Okay, So this just becomes 1 over omega over k. Um, now that took care of the u term. What about the u squared term? Well, it turns out capital F was a symmetric function, and so you can show that minus infinity to infinity du df du um, times uh, u squared over omega over k quantity squared is just equal to 0 because, for Maxwellian at least, f of u is odd, uh, even, sorry, function of u. Um, what about the next order one? First off, do I care? Well, sort of, it turns out. Uh, the next order one would be minus infinity, infinity, df, du, u cubed divided by omega over k, quantity cubed. And again, we would just integrate by parts, and this would give us then um, well, first we'll take our omega over k quantity cubed out in front. And then we'll have basically u cubed f from minus infinity to infinity. And then minus, and then we have to take the derivative of the u cubed. So that just gives us 3 u squared du f of u from minus infinity to infinity. Now, this integral again vanishes. What about this one? Well, it's kind of like the energy moment of the distribution function, right? 
And so if you work this out, it turns out it becomes 4 Maxwellian V thermal squared over 2. So what this gives us is 3 uh, halves, uh, and then omega, um, then we'll have omega over K V thermal. Sorry. Yeah, the other way around. K V thermal over omega quantity squared, and then we have one extra factor of omega over k. So uh, I'll show you in a moment why we care about that, because that is that standard correction to this thermal correction to the Bohm-Gross dispersion relation that accounts for the thermal velocities of the particles. So with these in mind, uh, going back to our, our sort of dispersion relation up here and just plugging in what each of these three terms were, uh, turned out to be, what we find is for our electron plasma oscillations, we have epsilon hat of k and omega over epsilon naught is approximately equal to 1 minus omega pe squared over k squared, and now all these contributions. They all have a common minus omega over k. And then the 1 gave us a 0. Sorry, you can't see that. Um, the first order, or lowest order term, 1, gave us 0 because you have to use an odd function, basically. The next one just gave us 1 over omega over k. The next one, u squared, gave us a 0. And the next one gave us 3 halves. Uh, k squared v thermal e squared over omega squared, uh, and then 1 power omega over k, so 1 over omega over k. And then, of course, uh, we just got tired of calculating, and there's really an infinite series there. And then in addition to this first term, we have plus pi i dfdu evaluated at u equals omega over k. Close brackets. So now, just collecting all these things together, um, what this approximately is, is then 1 minus, well, minus goes away and becomes plus uh, omega pe squared Actually, I'm missing a minus sign here someplace along the line. Aha, sorry. Uh, back on this page, sorry, I left out the minus sign that I get from there, right? And likewise, the minus sign that I got from there. Uh, I wrote it on one line, but then didn't write it on the other line, sorry. So the net result of that is that effectively changes that to a plus sign. So otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten nice cold plasma dispersion relations here. So anyway, we can take out a common omega over k out of all that stuff. And the case, it's omega squared over k squared, over k squared. So that just cancels. So we get 1 minus omega pe squared over omega squared. At least from the first part, we'll have to kind of put it back into the second part there. Uh, and then that's times 1 plus 3 halves k squared v thermal e squared over omega squared plus higher order terms. And then we have our residue term. Uh, and what that residue term looks like is then plus, uh, now it'll be omega pe squared divided by k squared and then um, 1 over omega over k, and then pi i df du. Evaluated again at, for those, at the velocity of the phase velocity of the wave. OK, so that's our dispersion relation for um, electron plasma oscillations. Now, 
including the effect of um, so-called kinetic effects, the fact that I can have particles moving at the same velocity as the phase velocity of the wave. Where pre previously we didn't have this small imaginary part, and it, well, it's going to be small, but anyway, uh, so I'll for the moment just say small um, imaginary part, which was due to taking account of the wave particle resonance mathematics properly. Uh, and this is going to lead to, in a moment, Landau damping. Particularly if we keep a minus sign in front of it so that it'll be <laughs> the proper sign. I just see. Okay, so now what's the sort of lowest order uh, solution of this dispersion relation? Um, well, the first thing is uh, that we usually neglect um, thermal effects. What you like to make sure is, you know, when you get this more complicated answer with kinetic effects that you can get back to the case without. So neglecting thermal effects first means that k squared v thermal squared over omega squared goes to zero. But also the dfdu, uh, it means that we're way out on the tail of the distribution function, so dfdu goes to zero as well, it turns out. So then what we have is that we just have epsilon hat over epsilon naught is approximately equal to 1 minus omega pe squared over omega squared. And maybe if I kept the connect, I'll keep, sort of keep the, those, those effects just to make you aware of them. Um, and so if I set this equal to zero to get my dispersion relation for waves in such a plasma, you can see that I'll get our standard so-called Bohm-Gross dispersion relation, mega is equal to omega PE squared, plus three halves, and then omega is approximately omega PE, so we just stick that in, and it, it all simplifies, and we get then three halves K squared V thermal E squared, plus higher order corrections. But in some sense, if we want to do, let me call it next order, um, then what we're going to have to do is our dispersion relation has 1 over omega squared in it. And so what we need to say is, well, we're going to imagine there's a small imaginary part. So uh, let's say uh, assume, and then we'll show that that's the case, that the imaginary part of omega is much less than the real part of omega. If that's the case, then I'm perfectly happy to expand 1 over omega squared as 1 over omega real plus i times the imaginary part squared. And then namely, I'll just make that 1 over omega real squared, and then it becomes 1 plus i omega i over omega real, still squared. So far I haven't made any approximation, but I now will. So I just approximate this as 1 over omega real squared times 1 minus, and then 2i omega i over omega real plus higher order terms, which I, however, will not worry about. So if I <clears throat> stick that approximation for 1 over omega squared um, back into my dispersion relation here, okay, uh, and set it equal to 0, I'll just kind of write out what we get. Namely, we get that 0 is equal to epsilon hat over epsilon naught is equal to 1 minus omega PE squared over omega real squared. Um, and then there's a 1 plus, minus, sorry, 2i imaginary, uh, imaginary part 
over real part, plus so forth, and then a 1 plus 3 halves k squared v thermal e squared over omega squared, plus a whole bunch of terms, and then plus, uh, sorry, minus actually, uh, omega p e squared over k squared, 1 over Seems like I have an extra. Uh, seems like I have an extra one over omega over k here. Oh yeah, right. Um, I see. When I come all the way back to here, sorry. Uh, this one over omega over k came only from that expansion of the principal value integral. And this factor of 1 over omega over k simply didn't belong there. Uh, I just had only the omega pe squared over k squared times that. So that shows up now uh, because now I, um, well, minus omega pe squared over k squared uh, and then pi i times df du evaluated at u equals omega over k. Now, the reason for writing it all out this way and imagining that I have small imaginary part is that if I now take the real part of the dispersion relation, the real part of all that, and set it equal to zero, that gives me my traditional just omega real squared is equal to omega pe squared um, plus 3 halves k squared V thermal E squared plus higher order terms. Setting the imaginary part equal to zero, however, will give me the small damping rate of this particular wave. And so let's do that. Namely, we get zero is equal to, now there's minus omega P E squared over omega real squared, and then minus two omega I over omega real. And I won't worry about thermal corrections there. And then we get minus hmm, yeah. minus uh, omega p e squared over k squared pi i df du evaluated at the particular phase velocity u equals omega over k. Ah, right, shouldn't have the second I. <laughs> or should have one or both. <laughs> or none or both, not, not in between. Okay, so what do we get out of this? Well, we can just then solve for the imaginary part that omega I is equal to. Um, now, from the real part, we know that this part roughly cancels that, so I won't worry about that. Um, this is minus minus plus on the other side makes it all plus. And so what we end up with is pi over 2 omega p e, because this omega real is approximately equal to omega p e, and then times uh, omega p e squared over k squared, and then df du, u equals omega over k. And this is then our so-called Landau damping rate. Um, and basically, it uh, again, where did it come from? Well, where it came from, realize, is again from that going around the pole in the complex plane properly. And so it came from treating the mathematics of an initial value problem correctly. Okay? And we'll talk a minute about how uh, physically it came about. And it was originally derived, uh, Landa, I'm sorry, Flazov had actually derived all this before and said, well, there was no imaginary part. 
uh, but we call him the, the Flazov equation. And Landau went into this and said, but you, when you treat it as a proper initial value problem, you get this extra pi i imaginary part, which is, uh, which is a damping, and so people call it Landau damping from 1936, uh, actually. And in a sense, it's a triumph of mathematical physics. It, it wasn't due to any physical measurement, you know, or anything like that. It was purely from properly treating the singularity. And what it's really due to is wave-particle interactions when the wave is traveling at the same velocity as the particles. Um, so let's a little bit talk about this. Now, um, so let's talk about Landau damping. Um, first, we kind of have to sketch what we're really doing here. Namely, um, we have a distribution function of electrons, which is this f of u as a function of u. And it's some particular distribution function, which I'll just plot in green here, which is Maxwellian, remember. Or typically, you know, we just assume it's Maxwellian. Um, so this was um, proportional to e to the minus u squared. Now, when we have said that we are interested in phase velocities omega over k, much, well, we've effectively said that we're interested in phase velocities much greater than the thermal speed. On this diagram, we could, you know, this is actually u squared, uh, perhaps I should have written it, over v thermal e squared. And so the point at which the function goes to the value 1 over e is, in fact, the thermal velocity, right? But what we're interested in is a wave that sits out about here, okay? Some phase velocity, omega over k, which is out on the tail of the distribution function. Now, what is the wave doing then? Well, the wave is looking at these particles that are moving. There are some particles in the distribution function then that are moving at exactly the same fa velocity as the phase velocity of the wave. So it's in synchronism with it. Okay. Now, uh, so let's kind of, uh, let me see which pen I want to do. Let's kind of blow up okay, this region out here. And what's happening, uh, well, I shouldn't have drawn the axis, but anyway, uh, is that the distribution function is coming down like this. And there is this particular wave phase velocity, at ome uh, wave velocity omega over k. And, and this is a function of u. And the idea is that the wave is, is sitting and is resonant with those particles right there. Now, resonant means that, you know, I've got some wave traveling along and particles are mo moving with the same velocity, sort of u uh, as approximately equal to omega over k. So I'm talking about particles that are at the same velocity as the wave. But, you know, uh, it's not just the particles that are exactly resonant with the wave, but those that are close to resonant with the wave that we're interested in here. And in particular, we've got some, okay, that are moving a little bit slower than the wave, and some that are moving a little bit faster than the wave, right? Which do I have more of? More particles moving slower than the wave or more particles moving faster than the wave? Well, in fact, I have more particles on the slow side with a Maxwellian than I do on the fast side. And so what that first off means is it means that usually, okay, this dfdu will be less than zero the derivative of the distribution function with respect to the speed u is less than zero. So indeed, uh, this is an imaginary part which is then less than zero. Um, uh, let's say on tail of Maxwellian. So 
what's happening is you can imagine now is you say, well, suppose I had a whole bunch of surfers which started, who started out at various phases relative to this wave. And I have more surfers, okay, moving slower than the wave than I do moving faster than the wave. So what happens is that there are more surfers who are going to take energy from the wave as they equilibrate and go to the same velocity as the wave compared to those who will give energy to the wave. So physically, you can imagine, you say, well, what the, what the wave is kind of doing is, in, is it's capturing particles within some boundary layer here, which is either a trapping boundary or a collisional boundary, it turns out. And it's going to try to flatten make all the particles have the same velocity as the phase velocity of the wave, uh, flatten that um, distribution function in that region. In flattening it, I had to take those particles and move them from a lower energy to a higher energy. All the surfers that were moving a little bit slower in the wave got kind of sped up. Okay? All the surfers that were moving faster got slowed down, but pragmatically, there were more surfers going slower than faster. So the net result is you get a damping. So what you can say is that Landau damping uh, is a um, resonant damping process in a boundary layer. At the phase at a speed u approximately equal to omega over k, which leads to damping if df du, the derivative of the distribution function at that particular phase velocity, is less than zero, which is usually true for a Maxwellian. But in a moment, we'll talk about a so-called bump-on-tail instability, where if I have a, a bump of particles out here, a beam, I could get a positive derivative for a little while. And now, really, let me ask you another question, and this sort of comes up in some other contexts in Chen, but in the nonlinear part, truthfully. Um, suppose I just trap these particles again. Imagine the surfer analogy. I just trap the particles in the wave. Um, then it turns out that the information that I lost, think of entropy information, you know, the information that I scrambled up a bit d did not actually get lost. Or, or I'm sorry, in, in, in the trapping sense it does, but in the trapping sense I just equilibrate all the particles. But let me imagine that I have just a small linear wave and I don't trap trap the particles, um, then the initial effect of the surfers moving a little slower, a little faster, does not actually get lost. And the way you can show that is you can show that if you stick another wave coming through, it also jiggles the particles. And you can show that you get an echo, a plasma echo, from having from the, at the difference frequency or the sum frequencies. Uh, from passing two waves through. So I didn't lose the information. I just phase mixed it away physically where I am. So some people call this phase mixing. But on the other hand, um, if I phase mix two waves and, and then I have this echo, I may have, however, lost the real information, which information here is wave particle phase. Uh, but I can, uh, but it can become, so it's mainly, Landau damping is mainly a phase mixing uh, non resonant process where I don't really lose information. But I can, uh, but it can lead to irreversibility, namely the loss of that information uh, via collisions small angle Coulomb collisions, or nonlinearities. So the idea is that Landau damping is really a phase mixing away 
at the particular position I'm at, a phase mixing away of detailed phase information between particles and waves because they go along and then you lose track of the phase. But on the other hand, I can then recapture that phase information by sending another wave through and beating against that. However, if there were a few collisions before I did that beating, then I would really produce an irreversible process or some nonlinearities in phase space, it turns out, like nonlinear oscillators and so forth. And either of those processes can lead to a net ultimate irreversibility or entropy production. Okay, so now, uh, so that's what, Chen, uh, that's what uh, Landau damping is all about. And Chen structures his chapter, I might say, to tell you all the things it is not all about. And I've tried to say what it is all about. Um, so between the two, hopefully, you can figure out a little bit what it's due to. But it, it's basically just it's a wave particle initial value uh, interaction. Okay, now we need to do a little bit more mathematics of it in that we need to find this imaginary part of omega and show that, indeed, uh, we need to work it out, let's say that, um, uh, and, and show you that, indeed, it is fairly small and what it really looks like. So um, let's, um, let's say uh, math of Landau damping. So um, it's like the omega PE, but it's in you know various things. Now, um, oh, I'm sorry. One thing I, I wanted to mention on the past one here is this boundary layer is, or singular layer, um, is either because of collisions of width, the cube root. It turns out it's a boundary layer, or, you know, small diffusion angle stuff. Uh, of nu over k v, or alternatively, if that's if it's collisional, or alternatively, if it's uh, trapping, it's the ratio of the potential, the magnitude of the potential, uh, divided by m v squared, and that's just a a square root. So basically, there is a, a singular layer here where I either trap the particles or small angle Coulomb collisions. Um, cause uh, scattering in and out of that region, and so there's a, a boundary layer effect. Okay, so now what I, I want to do, though, is now to go back and um, evaluate this imaginary part, and what I need to do is remember what this distribution function, one-dimensional, remember we integrated, the wave is moving in the x direction, we integrated over the other two directions of a Maxwellian, and what we ended up with for a Maxwellian is f of u is 1 over root pi v thermal e to the minus uh, u squared over v thermal squared. That being the case, um, then I can evaluate df du, and that's just equal to minus 2 uh, u over v thermal squared and 1 over root pi v thermal and then e to the minus u squared over v thermal squared. But we wanted to evaluate that at the particular speed of the phase velocity of the wave. And so that became then minus 2 over root pi. Um, <coughs> now we'll leave it as, well, sorry, omega, u becomes omega and then over k v thermal. Um, and then we have a 1 over V thermal squared, sort of extra, and then an E to the minus omega over K V thermal squared. So that's the DF DU we needed to know, and we now want to um, stick this into this equation for the imaginary part of omega. So the imaginary part of omega is pi over 2, and then... Uh, well, with a minus sign, I guess, now. And then we get, uh, well, uh, I guess I'll write it out this way, omega PE, omega PE squared over K squared. Um, 
So that's everything but the DFDU, and I took the minus sign, so now this is 2 over root pi omega over k v thermal, and then 1 over v thermal, and this was evaluated for the electron distribution function, so I might as well take that into account, and e to the minus omega over k v thermal e quantity squared. Aha, uh -huh. right there, right, hopefully, yeah. I would have seen that in a moment here, yes, good. Okay, so this together with that gives me an omega over kV thermal squared. Um, now, you remember that we had a um, uh, an expression for omega. This is omega squared over k squared v thermal squared. Namely, what we had was that omega real squared, I'm going to square it up there, so we'll worry, we'll worry about that in a moment, is equal to omega PE squared. Now, you know, there was this other term, which was, uh, say, 3 halves K squared V thermal E squared. Do we need that extra term? And then there's an order, you know, K to the fourth term. Well, if we go in and divide this by K squared V thermal E squared, which is effectively what we want to do up here in the exponent, then you divide all this through by K squared V thermal E squared. The first term is certainly omega PE squared over K squared V thermal E squared. But the next term, okay, is just a pure constant plus 3 halves. And then we'll have an order K squared type term. So the point of this is, ordinarily, we don't worry about this when we're talking about coefficients out in front, omega over kV thermal. But when I have e to the minus something, then that 3 halves be kind of, becomes kind of important. So the idea is, oh, I'm sorry, I should have labeled that I really will evaluate this at, you know, at the real frequency of the waves for the particular waves, you know, that are propagating. The slight Landau damping is what we're trying to calculate. Okay, so sticking this into this then, you can see that what I'll get is omega i. Now the, the twos cancel out and the pi goes into the root pi. And so it's approximately uh, minus root pi omega p e. Um, and then, oh, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Um, and now out in front, I've got omega is about omega PE, and I've got a total of three factors. So that's omega PE squared over K squared V thermal E squared. And then I have E to the minus, and now it's actually the sum of both of those terms. So it's minus 3 halves and then minus sorry, uh, omega PE squared over K squared V thermal E squared. What is this quantity keeps coming up here? Oh, I'm sorry, that should be to the 3 halves. What is this quantity that keeps coming up omega squared over K squared V thermal E squared? Well, you remember that 1 over the electron to by length squared was equal to... Um, omega p e squared divided by v thermal e squared, but then with a 2 in it. So this tells us that omega p e squared over k squared v thermal e squared is in fact 1 over 2 k squared lambda to by electron squared. So the sort of net result of that is that we can then uh, write our formula as imaginary part is minus root pi. Now I'll take the e to the minus 3 halves out in front here. So this is 3 halves. Then this form just gives us 1 over, I'm sorry, let's take our omega pe for the frequency, time or divided by 2 k squared lambda to by electron squared quantity cubed, or three halves, 
and then e to the minus 1 over 2 k squared lambda to by electron squared. Now, we haven't emphasized it, but remember we're always interested in sort of long wavelength modes compared to the electron to by length. And this sort of tells us why. Uh, so this is small electron Landau damping it turns out for again k squared lambda to by electron squared much less than one so it's one over a small number to the three halves power but it's e to the minus one over that same small number okay um, now it's small damping on the plasma frequency time scale Okay, so you know it's sort of two or three orders of magnitude smaller than the um, well uh, smaller than uh, the plasma frequency, the oscillation frequency. So it's very very weak damping. Now one um, just comment about uh, if you actually try to measure this in an experiment, um, we've done it as if we have a certain k and there's a, uh, and then we imagine that the wave is decaying in time, right? But usually the experiment is actually done in a finite geometry, and it's a, a wave source at one position, and you watch the wave propagate away with a certain group velocity, and then you watch its decay in, in space as opposed to time. And if you set epsilon uh, to zero, uh, this would be delta omega d epsilon by d omega plus delta k d epsilon by dk. Um, and then you can show that the k change you get away from a real value would be minus delta omega d epsilon by d omega divided by d epsilon by dk. And it turns out this is plus delta omega. And if you look back, this is the, what we had as the group velocity divided by the group velocity. Um, so the idea is that instead of measuring the imaginary part of omega, the temporal damping, you measure the imaginary part of K, the spatial damping. And if you do that in an experiment, a uh, particular experiment by Malmberg and Wharton in the late um, 60s, you imagine measuring the logarithm of imaginary K over real K, which is the damping rate uh, spatially, and the key parameter I could have left this was omega over k v thermal e quantity squared. Remember, um, so the key parameter becomes the phase velocity over the electron thermal speed uh, squared, and uh, they show a bunch of, of data, or were able to obtain a bunch of data, uh, which showed that in fact the damping was indeed uh, between some, say, t 10 and 20, sort of three times the thermal, three to four times the thermal velocity. The damping rate on the tail of the distribution function was indeed as predicted uh, by this Landau damping formula. That is to say, if I had a plasma and I propagate a wave in that plasma at three times the electron thermal speed out on the tail of the electron distribution function. Very few particles out there, but enough such that when that wave interacts with those particles which are resonant with that wave, it creates a little bit of damping. It's like 10 to the minus 2 or something like that, 1% 1, 1 damping. And this is indeed what's called Landau damping, uh, and it has been proven to be um, indeed a very uh, robust feature of uh, collision-less plasmas. It's nominally, you see, a collision-less damping. There's no, you don't really need collisions to get the phase mixing that's embodied in Landau damping. Okay, we'll break for a moment now, and then we'll come back and discuss some manifestations of this.